Now that you're familiar with project and section creation, we can discuss SciCat's primary purpose, the description of sections. Open your project from the previous tutorials, and then double click a name to open one of those sections. This will open a diagram containing your section image and five additional columns. When you first open a section, SciCat tries to pick a sensible zoom level, but you may want to adjust this. Using the View menu, you can zoom in and out. Most users find it much easier to use the keyboard shortcuts, which are Control minus for zoom out and Control plus for zoom in. Now we'll look at the five non-image columns. Two of these can't be edited directly. The ruler column simply displays the current depth in the current units. The description column will display your descriptions of units, intervals, and symbols outside of those columns. Now we'll look at the three columns that are of the main interest, the editable columns, units, intervals, and symbols. In the units column, you can define a series of contiguous intervals. To create a unit, mouse over the units column. As you move up and down, you'll see a darkened region following the mouse. Uh, between the top of the section and the mouse location. If you click, a unit of that length will be created. Do so now. You should see a region outlined in red. Below the diagram, you should see text fields and other controls. This area is called the properties pane. First, enter some text in the name field. Hello! Once you click away from this field, you should see the name draw in the unit. Now enter some text in the description field. I am some descriptive stuff. Again, when you click away, you should now see that description appear in the description field at the very top. We'll ignore the scheme and the group items for now. Let's look at the section name in the diagram tab. See that star that appeared there? That means this section has been modified, but the changes are unsaved. You can save your changes by using File, Save Section, or the control S shortcut. And as soon as you do that, the star goes away indicating that this section has been saved. Now, we'll close the section and reopen just to convince ourselves we've saved data. If we close it and double click again to reopen it, we can see our unit remains and our description remains. If you try to close an unsaved section, SciCat will prompt you to save before closing. Now, let's mouse over the units column again, somewhere beneath the bottom of the first unit we created. Again, you should see a darkened region from the bottom of the previous unit to the current mouse position. Click, and we'll create another unit. Again, we could give it a name, howdy, and a description, some stuff. We won't worry about scheme and group for now. So now you have two units. Suppose you wanted to modify the upper unit. Maybe we don't like the name hello anymore. If we click it, we'll select it. So the, the red outline simply indicates what is selected. We can now modify the name to goodbye, for instance, and it changes right away. Uh, so this is how we would go about modifying units and everything else in SciCAD. Click to select, and you can modify its properties. Now, let's try modifying the base depth of the uppermost unit by a small amount, either upwards or downwards. You can do this either by dragging or by entering a new value in the base field here. I'm going to do it by dragging. I'm just going to drag down a little bit. By dragging up or down, you'll adjust the top or bottom depth once you release the mouse button. There is no visual feedback, unfortunately, at present. So as you can see, we modified the base of the top unit, and the top of the unit beneath, Howdy, was adjusted along with it, so to match the base of the previous unit. So its top is 2.15, Goodbye's bottom is 2.15. Uh, if we modified it by typing to uh, 0.25 meters instead and click away, we'll see that again. Howdy has been adjusted downward to account for that, maintaining contiguity of the units. So Howdy's top is now 0.25 and good ba Goodbye's base is now 0.25, so they always try to match up. Those are the basics of creating and editing units. You can delete the selected unit by hitting the Delete key or by choosing Edit Delete. 
You can undo and redo actions through the menu as well. So I just deleted that section. Let's say I didn't want to do that. If I do control Z, I will bring it back. So I'm going to save my diagram in this state. Next, we'll look at the interval column. It's very similar to the units column in that it allows you to create a contiguous set of intervals. Just as in units, create an interval by hovering over the column and clicking to, clicking to create. Now, in the properties pane, you can choose the lithology and you'll see a texture appear in the interval you just created. There are a lot of lithologies here, but just pick one at random, dolomite. You can see a texture now appears there. When the pop-up menu is highlighted, you can also type a few keys to limit the amounts of things you see. So for instance, if I type CH, it will limit what is in the list to chalk and other things containing CH, like limestone one churty. So that's a way to deal with the rather large list. This is the stock SciCAD list of lithologies. You can create your own set of lithologies, uh, and we'll discuss that in another tutorial. You can also optionally specify a grain size. This will affect how wide the interval is at its top and base. So if I put in 0.01 at uh, top and let's say 256 at the base, you'll see that it now juts out much more at the base than it does at the top. And of course, as always, we can provide some kind of description here, as with every, everything in SciCAD. In some cases, you may want to insert an interval between two existing intervals. Let's say I added this interval. So again, just as in units, it will add a new interval between the bottom of the topmost interval and wherever the mouse cursor is. I'll call this flint clay. Give it a fake grain size of this. Suppose we wanted to insert an interval between these two intervals. The easiest way to do that is to select the interval either of them, go to the edit menu and choose split interval. This divides the selected interval in half, maintaining its lithology and description and grain size. You can now modify the added little interval to your liking. So let's say this is uh, clay, and let's say it's a bit, it starts a bit farther down. There we go, we've inserted an, an interval. And again, edit and redo, or undo and redo work uh, just as they do in units. We could undo those operations and get back to where we were all the way. We could, we could redo all those operations as well and get back to the last state we were in. Finally, we'll look at the symbol column. Unlike units and intervals, symbols are initially defined at a single depth rather than an interval. Many symbols can exist at the same depth. To create a symbol, hover over the column and notice the darkened square that appears. Clicking will create a new symbol at that point. In the Properties pane, you can select a symbol from the Scheme menu. So this is the stock SciCat set of symbols. Again, a very long list. You can limit by typing. I could do MU just to limit to mud, M to do anything that has an M. Uh, we'll try this Macaronica Segregatus. You'll see your selected symbol appear in the column. As usual, you can describe the symbol as well and we'll continue to ignore group. Description of this macaroni-like thing. Click away and we'll see our description appear there. You can move the symbol around by mousing over it until you see the four arrow move cursor, as you see here, and then drag the symbol up or down. Move it up, can move it down. If you hover over the top or bottom border of the symbol, you'll see the vertical resize cursor with two arrows. By dragging, you can specify a depth range rather than a point for that symbol. So let's say the symbol actually ran from uh, about 20 centimeters to 35 centimeters. If I drag up here and release, now you can see the symbol is defined over that region. And you can see that its top depth is 0.2 meters and its base depth is around uh, 33 centimeters, 34 centimeters. That covers the basics of section diagram editing. All you have to do is save and close. You can reopen it. And you're ready to go. Edit to your heart's content.